What is going on my people? This is Tim Dodd with The Tim Dodd Show and today I wanna to show you how to get clients as an online coach without doing ads and sales funnels. I'm gonna make this very simple for you. We manage coaching teams that are doing six figures, seven figures, and even eight figures a year in business. So I'm gonna show you what separates the struggling coach doing five figures from the six figure coach, from the seven figure coaching teams, from the eight figure coaching teams, the guys doing tens of millions of dollars a year in business from their coaching. But before I do that, make sure you subscribe, make sure to click that bell so every time I drop a new video, boo, you're the first one to see it. I don't want you missing out. So there's really three things that we do at our agency. One is we book appointments for our clients' sales teams. We also set up automated systems to warm those appointments up. And the third thing we do is we actually work with their sales teams to make sure that those appointments are converting. So I'm going to tell you today what separates the struggling five-figure coaches from the six-figure, the seven-figure, and even the coaching teams doing tens of millions of dollars every year in business. So make sure to stay to the end because I'm gonna go over three things. Number one, I'm gonna show you what these struggling coaches are doing wrong and how you can do it better. Number two, I'm gonna show you what the big coaching teams are doing right and how you can apply that to your business. And then third, at the end, I'm going to go through how you can start scaling and growing your business right now, no matter where you're at. So the number one thing, and I am gonna get into the whiteboard today. I like to draw, it's kind of fun. I'm not very good at it, but I'm going to do it. Number one is that all of these gurus that aren't actually running marketing agencies, they're just teaching people how to get customers, but they're not actually doing the work that they teach. They're gonna tell you to niche down, niche down. You've gotta know, is the person you're targeting male or female? Is the person you're targeting um, this age or this age? Is the person targeting this or do they eat dogs or the cats? And they overly niche down. This is a common misconception that has been taught um, for years and years and years. But what has happened is, is years and years and years ago, the people that would send out mailers, like they'd send out like direct mail in bulk that were making tons of money back in the day, they created these customer profiles in this way because what they were doing is sending out millions of cards and they needed to, they needed to have a message that spoke very directly to certain customer personas. However, in this digital age, we, um, people are trying to apply that old customer persona. You probably heard it a million times. Make sure to get your customer persona just right. And they're using old school tactics and trying to apply it to new school platforms. So let's say we're targeting on Facebook. You have certain criteria you can target and certain criteria you can't. If you're targeting on LinkedIn, you have certain criteria you can target, certain criteria you cannot. It, well, whatever the platform is, you have a different type of customer persona. So what you have to do is first, figure out what platform you're gonna be targeting on, then build the customer persona based off of your targeting options. For instance, LinkedIn is a big part of what we do. Number one, I can do industry. What industry am I targeting? Industry, whatever. Number two, I can target a title. Very, very important. Title. I could do stuff like company size. How big is the company that they, they are in? I could, I could even do years of experience. There's so many different options and I have a training on how to do, how to use Sales Navigator if you wanna see how to do more of this. So make sure to watch my other videos. But what people are trying to do is they're trying to fit that, hey, I'm targeting a 35 to 45 year old career executive with a dog that blank, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to fit these old school personas into this new school category. So what ends up happening is you're blowing most of your money trying to find these rare people in this big audience. What you need to do is create customer personas based off of what you can target. I'm telling you, the people back in the day, the direct mail people, if they saw the targeting opportunities that we have right now, they would be like, why the hell are you using our old school stuff? If we had your tools, we would be like making gajillions of dollars. So make sure your niche is very, 
targeted on here, but you do have to be specific. On the other end of the spectrum, you'll have people that say, I can help everybody do everything, really, and they actually haven't done anything themselves. So you do wanna have um, more specific on who you can help, and that might be multiple groups of people, but just remember to start with the platform first. If you're doing business to business or you're selling high ticket um, services that you can market on LinkedIn, LinkedIn's gonna be your best source. If you're targeting more uh, consumer products, you know, um, Facebook and Google is probably gonna be a better source, but first off, see what those platforms have to offer, because I guarantee these old school guys back in the day that taught you this, that's still being taught, even by internet freaking gurus, this old school stuff still being taught, these guys that created this, they'd be drooling at the mouth that they had the targeting options we had. So let's go ahead and go on to the next thing. The next part I want to talk about is building a course in a webinar. Everybody, every coach thinks they need a course. They think they need a webinar. And I, you, I've literally talked to hundreds, if not thousands of coaches that say, oh, I'm working on my course right now and it'll be out in two or three months and we're building a webinar for it. And oh boy, when that launches, we're going to go. I, but I've never seen a struggling coach that built a course and a webinar be successful. I've only seen successful coaches that are already doing well, that already have new customers coming in, that then create a webinar, then create a course, become successful with that. So you actually don't wanna start with the webinar, you don't wanna start with the course, you actually wanna start by just getting customers. And you can even get paid to build a course by having better testing clients. Another fatal flaw that these struggling coaches have is that they treat sales prospects like referrals. Now, let me be very, 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 very clear. Uh, I don't know why I just did that with the whiteboard. I don't need to write anything down. But let me be very clear. If you've only gotten referrals, you're, and you think, man, I'm pretty good at sales. I'm closing half my, half the people I talk to. Half, uh, a 50% close rate on referrals is bad. Let me let me say that again. A 50% close rate on referrals is bad. Well, Tim, I've got a 100% close rate. Great, great for you. You close 100% of the referrals. I'm telling you, if you treat sales prospects like referrals, or if you hire a lead company and, and they are expecting to get referral quality leads, you're just never going to, to be successful. And I've seen this happen over and over and over and over and over again, that that struggling coach, maybe they are working a job and then they try to do this coaching thing. They get a couple people that refer them and then they try to hire a lead service and they get a couple appointments and go, these leads are horrible. They're not warmed up. They're, they don't know what they want. It's because you're treating a sales prospect like a referral. Now, let me ask you, if you replied to an ad or somebody reached out to you on LinkedIn and said, hey, I can help you, you know, I'm a business coach. If you, are you getting on the call with them ready with credit card in hand? Here's my money, let me pay you. No, you're not. And so why would we expect that somebody we reached out to either through an ad on Facebook or Google or LinkedIn, why would we expect them to come to the phone credit card in hand. Why, why, why? You see, the difference between a referral and a, a good quality prospect is that a good quality prospect uh, does not have trust yet. A referral comes pre-built with trust. Let me explain something to you, is that 50% of all deals will be given to the first person they talk to. In most cases, if you're referred, you're the first and only person that that referral is talking to about this service. This, the service. The other 35 to 50% are going to go to the last person they talk to. So when you go from referrals and you're used to closing 50 or 60 or 70 or 80% and you go to a prospect that's talking to a couple other companies, it's a much different shift. You have to learn the sales process. So that's the biggest thing is that these small struggling coaches don't realize that the most important skill for them to master is sales. Even the big coaching companies where the uh, the CEO is not even running the, the sales team, they're not even doing sales anymore, they started off as high level salespeople. They, they got really good at mastering sales. That's very, very important. So what are the big companies doing that the small struggling ones are not? I'm gonna tell you right now. Number one, the big coaching teams are focused on selling, getting new customers in. They're focused 1000% on new client acquisition. Why is this? Well, paying clients help you perfect your product. Most struggling coaches 
are are going to keep trying to perfect their product, keep trying to create that course, keep trying to make the thing perfect, and then they get one or two customers that come in right here and they never realize why it doesn't take off. It's because you need to focus on creating a flow of new customers consistently. And I tell you what, those paying customers are gonna tell you what they like and what they don't like about your product better than anybody else. The second thing that they do is they map out their customer personas and their customer journey. So remember the titles, that all these different things that we can target? Let me explain something to you. So when I'm talking to a customer, I'm wondering, is this a, you know, a six figure coach? Uh, let's just say a five figure, five figure. I, I'm gonna have a product I can help them with. A five figure coach, I have a product that I can help them with. Oh, I'm, messing, I'm messing this up, anyways. I can help them get to that six figures. Then, for the six figure coach, I have a product that can help them get to seven figures. Then, for the seven figure coach, I have a product that can get them to eight figures. Now, I will eventually have a product that goes beyond that. This is the furthest I've been able to create for somebody right now. So I have a product, so no matter who I meet, who I talk to, if they're doing five figures, I can help them. And in so helping them, I'm going to get money back on that. I, if they're six figures or they're seven figures, our best clients that are doing the, the big, big money, they have more inventory. They have more products that they can sell depending on the customer. And it's not just different products for different customers. I want this five figure coach to make making five figures to buy my product so they can get to six figures. And then I'm going to sell them my product at six figures to help them get to seven figures. And then I'm going to sell them my product at seven figures to get them to eight figures. You want to have a customer journey. So you're not just helping one person and only selling them one thing. You want to be able to help a uh, your customer personas in different parts of their journey and you want to have a map that can bring them along. Very, very straightforward. Struggling coaches will generally find one. They'll say, I only help eight figure companies because I'm too good for anybody else. Yet they're struggling to make it. Or, hey, I only help little small guys and then they wonder why they're struggling to get money from the little small guys. You have to have different inventory uh, and, and, and specific personas for each type of uh, process. Very straightforward. The third thing that these highly successful seven figure and eight figure coaching teams do is they buy customers. They create systems to buy clients. Now there's a couple steps that they do. One is they find one channel and they stick with it until it starts producing well. They don't try, oh, I tried LinkedIn. I tried it for three months from a lead gen company and it didn't work. I tried Google ads, it didn't work. I tried Facebook ads, it didn't work. Guess what? Google ads is working insanely well for a lot of people. Facebook ads is working insanely well for a lot of people. LinkedIn outreach is working insanely well for a lot of people. So if I tried it and it didn't work, if you're doing that, you're giving up before you get it to work. So they focus on a channel until it is producing. This is called flow. They're creating flow in their business. They're creating flow. New, new leads coming in. The second part is then they optimize conversion. Look, if you can at least just break even on this first part up front, you're winning because then you optimize conversion, you start making profit on it, you're doing well. You keep optimizing that channel until it's producing right. And then, the, then from there, what you're gonna do is you're going to increase chan channels. You're gonna add more channels. You're gonna keep adding channels. You're gonna increase channels. You're gonna stabilize. You're gonna then optimize. And then you repeat. Third is you repeat 
the process. Now, what struggling coaches do is they try LinkedIn, they try Facebook, they try Google for two, three, four months. Oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Well, it's working for these guys. I have clients that are making tons of money from our LinkedIn outreach. They're making tons of money from Facebook. They're making tons of money from SEO. They're making tons of money from Google. They're making tons of money from their email list. Those are five sources at least, I'm sure they're doing more, that they are making lots of money from. So if you've tried any of those five channels and they didn't work for you, guess what? They're working for somebody and the biggest reason I see why these, these small guys fail is because they try it for a short period of time and then they jump to the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing and they never stick with it long enough to get it to work. So let me ask you, if your competitor is getting it to work, then why do you think you aren't? And I'm gonna go into how to actually get these channels to work here in a little bit. But I want you to think about that. If you're struggling, is it because the, the LinkedIn doesn't work or the Google doesn't work or the Facebook doesn't work? Or is it because you didn't work it right? You didn't stick with it long enough. You didn't test long enough. You didn't do it effectively enough. So that's a big thing that that's up to you. You have to be able to own up to that because other people are getting these things to work. So how do you accelerate your growth? Whether you're doing 2K a month, you're just starting and doing no revenue, you're doing 10K a month, 50K a month, 500K a month, or you're already doing multi-million dollars every month. How do you get to that next level? Because there's always gonna be, at each increment of growth, there's gonna be new struggles, new challenges that's gonna require you to think differently, act differently, and do some things differently to get to that next level. So I'm gonna go into that, but before I do, let me explain to you a very, very, very important concept. You see, most businesses fall into two categories. The first one is going to be a retention. The retention businesses. They're very good at keeping their clients, getting their clients to spend more money with them and keep things going. And you know, this is a, this is very important, right? Like, Hey, we're a retention business. We get mostly referrals. Um, we do a great job for our clients and you know, they keep coming back and they keep sending people great. The second one is a flow business. And this is a company that gets very good at bringing in new flows of customers. And it doesn't matter if they're losing clients to them because we're just going to keep getting new clients in. They're bringing lots of flow, but they're not really focused on retention. These are the two primary businesses that exist. But the reality is, is to be an exceptional business, you actually need three things. What are those three things? You need, first and foremost, you need flow. Flow, which is your marketing, is senior to everything else. Number one is flow. Number two, you need conversion. You need to be able to convert your marketing efforts. So flow is the most important because you're getting attention, you're getting interest. Conversion is the second most important. And then the third is you do need retention. If, let's see, if you can do the, these three things, retention, attention, retention. If you can get flow, conversion, and retention, you can build an exceptional company. The reason why most businesses fail or struggle is because they're either doing the retention, hey, I'm built on referrals, I get referrals because I do a great job, or flow business. Hey guys, I did hundred thousand dollars this month blah, 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 and all this stuff, but they're not actually keeping their clients. If you want to build something exceptional, you have to create flow as number one priority. You have to then create conversion as number two priority and then retention as number three priority. Retention is number three. Why is that? Well, it is a big priority. It's in the top three, but it is not the number one priority. So to build an exceptional company, you got to have all three, but in this order, of priority. If you're putting the priority here or here above here, you're not going to win, period. But if you only put the focus here or here, but not here, you're not gonna win. You have to have all three to win, but you have to put flow as a priority. So why is flow the most important thing to have in order? Well, let me ask you something. Have you ever lost a client and that affected your income, that set your company back, that made things tight or hard, that's because you don't have flow. You don't have a, enough flow of new, new interested prospects coming in 
to make sure that, look, we're all going to lose business. No matter, no matter the, even the best retention companies, they're going to lose a client. So if you don't have flow, you're going to feel that impact on a big deal. Another thing is if you don't have flow, you're going to be waiting on that one deal that might close. I just sent out three proposals, sent out a proposal. I'm working the deal. It might close, but you don't have enough flow. So you're putting all your efforts on that, either that client that you lost or that client that you might get. Flow gets rid of all that. If you have enough flow, you're not just focused on one deal you're working. You're, you're working six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40 deals, hundreds of deals if you're a team, uh, thousands of deals if you're a big team, you're working all these deals at once. So, you know, as they start coming in, you're not relying on one. And with that happening, you're not gonna be concerned if you lose one client, which happens to the best of companies. That's not gonna stress you out. So flow is your number one priority in your business. Now that you understand flow is the most important part, how much should you be investing in your marketing? So the, the, the standard answer is about 20 to 30% of your revenues should be going into your marketing. So kind of think if you're doing five grand, 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, that number is gonna fluctuate a little bit. In fact, the, the lower the revenue you're doing, the higher the percentage should be so let's just talk about let's say you're doing so 20 to 30 percent let's just say you're doing 10k a month that means you should be spinning 2k to 3k a month if you're doing five thousand dollars in new clients a month you should be spending $1,000 to $1,500. Now, one of the reasons why most of these coaches are going to always struggle is that's a really hard concept for them to get behind. They're going, geez, I'm only making $5,000. I'm only making $10,000. How can I spend a couple thousand on, on my marketing? Well, that's why you're only doing five or 10,000 is because you're not investing properly. Now, let me be very, very clear. I would not suggest to outsource the marketing if you only have two to three to four or $5,000. I would actually suggest for you to do this in-house, but you should be setting aside 20 to 30% of your marketing budget to invest in your growth, but you should be doing it in-house. And there's a couple reasons behind that. Number one, like you're not gonna get results if you hire a $500 a month, $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month. It's going to be very hard to get results, uh, especially in a short period of time. It's going to at best take a long time to start getting results because when you're outsourcing it, you're spending a lot of money on their time. Right now as a small struggling coach, you have more time than you have money. So you need to be taking the money you do have, investing that, um, in your own do-it-yourself until you get some traction. Does that make sense? So if you have two to three thousand dollars a month to spend because you're doing 10, 10k or you you do the math, you're gonna learn how to do this yourself. Whether this be LinkedIn outreach or, or running your Google Ads or your Facebook, you're gonna learn how to do this yourself. Now that's gonna give you enough budget to actually start getting results. Another benefit that this is gonna do for you is that now when you go to outsource, now when you got a five. $10,000, $20,000, $100,000 budget, you actually know how to manage the company you're hiring. Otherwise, you're kind of shooting in the dark when you hire an agency. You don't know if they're good, you don't know if they're bad. Um, if they are delivering good results, but you're not getting conversions, you might blame them. They might be doing a bad job and you're not getting conversions and you don't know. So learning how to do this in-house, um, if you only have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 to spend on marketing a month, um, or less, you need to do this in house so that you can not only get your revenues, but you can actually master it good enough so that you can now manage it. You have to be able to manage this moving forward when you hire a team. Let's say you're making, you know, 20K, 50K, 100K, 500K, or over a million dollars a month, and you're looking to get to that next level. Let's remember the formula is that flow as number one priority, conversion is number two priority, and retention is number three priority. So number one goal should be to in increase your flow sources. How many flow sources do you have? If your current flow sources are profitable, you need to expand those, not just more Facebook ad budget. Yes, do that if you can. There's boundaries to how much you can do, but also looking into other sources, you know, LinkedIn, uh, hitting your email list, uh, doing Facebook, doing Google, find more different sources of flow, max them out big time. The second part is your conversion. 
How, how are you ensuring that your conversion is improving? Your sales team is converting more. You're, you're do, setting up uh, email automations that warm your prospects up before the call. You're setting up uh, 365 day sales follow-ups. Our team does that for our clients. We will set up warm-up automation so that before the call, your prospects are warmed up. We'll set up one-year follow-up so that if they don't buy initially, you're gonna follow up with them for an entire year so they eventually buy. So that's a way to maximize your conversions. And the third part is obviously, you need to take that customer feedback. You need to improve your product, not just improve your product, not just make it better, but generate more LTV. LTV is lifetime value. So not just keep the clients, but keep selling them things. Now, remember what I said in the customer journey, if they're doing five figures, I can sell them something that'll get them to six figures. If they're doing six figures, I can sell them something that'll get them to seven figures. If they're doing seven figures, I can sell them something that will get them to eight figures. So I understand my customer personas and I can sell them the journey. So, you know, get, get five personas maybe, and create that journey. You don't wanna let any, any of these fall through. And what this will help you do, this will actually make uh, both your conversions more effective because your sales team will have more inventory to sell and it's gonna make your flow sources much, much bigger. So make sure you're doing that. If you know you're doing 50K, 100K, 500K, make sure you're doing that right. So now that you know what to do, let's look at how to do it. So let's say you are kind of identified with that struggling coach. Don't stress, don't worry. Literally, this video could be the time that you look back six months, 12 months, a year, five years from now and go, that was the moment that I determined I was going to build a big, successful coaching company. I wasn't gonna struggle, 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 struggle. And if that's you, if you're ready to take those next steps, I do have a free resource for you in the description. Of course, we also have paid resources, so if you like that free resource enough and you want us to help you even more, you can pay us down the line. Either way, that resource in the description is free for you. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it helps you scale your business, whether or not you hire us. But I know if you get tons of value from it, eventually you will. Now, on the other side, if you're already doing 50,000, 100,000, 20,000, wherever you're at, I also have a free resource for you. The same goes, I have paid products. I'm not lying. I'm not trying to say all my stuff's free. I'm going to give you free value because I know you're gonna get so much value from it that a good percentage of you are gonna end up hiring us. That's the way the marketing world works, is you give massive value beyond what your competitors are giving, and then eventually customers will come flocking to you. So hey, if you're that struggling coach, go down to the description, get that free resource. Hey, if you're already killing it, you're looking how to increase your flow, your conversions, or your retentions, I've got a, a resource for you, uh, companies that are already doing very well. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like, comment, I will engage with the comments. So like, comment, subscribe, click that bell, and I will see you in the next video. Also, I'm gonna plug, I do have a lot of other videos if you wanna get more in detail on how to do LinkedIn outreach, how to do the LinkedIn search, how to get better at your sales, how to get better at your leadership. I have lots of videos on that, so make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos, and I will talk to you soon. Did I just say videos? I meant videos. Talk to you soon, bye.